Why, hello, hello, folks. How's it going? So, uh, I was going to talk about something that I think uh, would be good for the game. Um, something that could, uh, could help new players. Because I've heard it said many, many times that one of the sort of biggest issues that Warframe has is that it's not like super new player friendly. Um, in general, just that like it's kind of overwhelming and you start the game and you don't really know what you're supposed to do or how you're supposed to do stuff. And eventually like you have to get to a wiki or whatever to get your bearings straight. And that's sort of like a collection of a lot of the lore of the game as well just happens to just end up there. Like the game never really tells you all that much about the modding system and like how to upgrade your mods and, and stuff like that. Um, but all that being said, like there's a ton of stuff that you can do um, to to improve the game in a technical sense. But one of the things that sort of I think would help a lot uh, to make the game more new uh, player friendly is... Uh, giving people a bit more insight earlier on as to the actual lore of the game and like what what's going on here because normally when you play the game you just get um, you know you go through the tutorial and then you do the Vor's prize mission and once Vor's prize is completed then it's like all right now you're on your own Go out, go out and explore in 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 the star chart. <laughs> and then you're just here on Earth and be like, okay, n now what? So they've done some tweaks along the way. They did like the, the new cutscene, which the new cinematic intro cutscene to start the game. That's that's cool. And, um, and they tweaked the mission a bit as well. Um... And then also a very important thing, uh, which is really good, is that up here, uh, currently I've, pl I've played all the quests, so on my account you can't see anything, but they've added a marker. They've added like a quest thing that's just, it's up here and it's sort of like telling you uh, what you should be doing, like the next thing. Usually linked to like whatever main quest is, is next on the list that you haven't done yet. Um, be it... Um, you know, Once Awake, uh, The Ark Wing, Stolen Dreams, stuff like that that you actually have to do to uh, uh, to progress further in the game. Um, but there is one thing that I think is really lacking uh, that could actually help a lot uh, with the story because it's sort of like a clunky part of the story. And that is... I don't think that Second Dream should be the first time that we meet the Lotus. I really don't. Uh, because you start the game and you, <clears throat> you, you wake up after being asleep for thousands of years. And immediately you, the Lotus talks to you and she guides you and she helps you escape from war and all of that. But she never really introduces herself. And she never really tells you who she is, uh, what sort of relation you two have with each other, uh, or why you're supposed to be uh, following her orders. Basically. And that sort of like creates a disconnect in the story. Uh, later on, when you go to, for example, um, Uranus... Uh, and, and you have all of these interactions between the Lotus and, and Tile Regor. And Regor is, is sort of questioning uh, why you are following the Lotus's orders and why you're doing her bidding and talks about how she doesn't really care about you and all of that. And we don't really have some sort of like emotional t connection to the Lotus at, at this point. She's just She is just the voice on the radio telling us what to do. And... I I understand that they want the sort of cinematic experience of like the Lotus showing up in person in the second dream, but I think uh, that moment would actually be stronger if we had met her before. Um, so my idea 
my idea would be that when you're here on Earth and you have completed the tutorial quest, which is, you know, Vor's prize, and you end up here, I think they should throw in another sort of questy thing. Be it a cutscene, if you will. Uh, and it also helps with progression and, like, telling you what, what to do and what you should be doing. I think uh, there should be a transmission from the Lotus uh, telling you to seek her out at a relay. That is, that is, like, obviously, different uh, consoles or PC or whatever have a bit uh, of a difference in what relays uh, still exist or not. The Strata relay, that exists on, on all platforms, but the Strata relay is a bit later in the game. Uh, you have Mercury, you have the La Ronda uh, relay, but that one, that one exists, I think, on all platforms except for Xbox. Uh, on Xbox, the, La the La Runda relay is destroyed. That being said, on Xbox, you do have the Vesper relay, which has not been destroyed. So, if you have... He so you can just put that one in the Vesper relay for people on Xbox. So here, you're done with Vor's prize. You get the transmission from the Lotus. She tells you, go to a relay, find me. So we can have a talk, so we can have an introduction. Then you're like, oh, a relay, what's that? And then you're like, oh, I can't get to that one yet because it's, you know, it's it's blocked. Because you got to do, like, the Mars Junction first. Um, but you look at other planets and you'll see, like, oh, here's a relay. Or in this case on Mercury, oh, here's a relay. Larunda relay. I'm supposed to go here. And then how do I get there? And you start backtracking. And then you find the Venus Junction. And it's like, oh, okay. I have to go to the Venus Junction and I have to unlock the next planet. You unlock the next planet. You start doing stuff here. You go to Mercury Junction and see what you're supposed to do. Oh, I have to defeat the boss here. Okay, good. You might get sidetracked to do some Fortuna stuff along the way. But eventually, you will uh, make your way to Venus and you will get to the La Runda Relay. Now, these are supposed to be like Tenno structures. Uh, they're part of the Tenno faction. And that's never really sort of explained what the Tenno faction is. Like, how big is the Lotus's sort of network? What role does she play? <clears throat> is she is she the coordinator? Is she the person who runs the Tenno faction? or what? Is, is all of this her? Or does this exist independently of her? We never really get that super explained. Uh, so this could help with that too. You show up here in a relay... And you see all of these other orbiters, and you see all of these other warframes and whatnot. And all of these people. And I think this would be a good spot to have the Lotus in. Not permanently, like, you, not that you can visit her whenever. But at least once. The first time you show up in a relay. And in these relays, uh, there are elevators. Now, they typically go down to where you find, like, Darvo and, uh, and, uh, Cephalon, Simaris, and, and Teshin, and all of that. But what if you had a quest marker here, the first time you show up in a relay? And then you go there, and when you click on the quest marker... Pew! You go down, but instead of just going down to, you know, where, where Simaris and, uh, and, and, and Teshin and, and all of that is... It keeps on going down. It keeps on going down. And it takes you here. To the chamber of the lotus. See, it even has like a thing where it's like it's an elevator to go down here. And then, you know, you get to, to do the walk down. And you get... And, and just put this here. Put put the chamber of the lotus in a relay. It's 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 so thematically appropriate to have it here. And you, you get up here and you get to meet the lotus. And you get to, to actually interact with her. It's cool. And normally, normally I'm I'm very big on the uh, show not tell method of, of uh, narration and, and telling a story. And I think Digital Extremes is as well. That's typically how they want to uh, to do things. But at this point, Warframe has been out for like. I don't know, what is it nine years at this point? And there's so much lore, and the story has taken so many twists and turns, and it's it, it, it's there's just so much to take in now that I honestly think 
what this game should have right here at this spot, even though I normally hate it. Or normally think it's... I hate's a strong word. But I normally think it's the wrong way of doing things. It should have an exposition dump. Uh, this should be where the Lotus introduces her to self. She tells you uh, who she is and who you are. And it's going to be a bit bullshit. <laughs> She's not really going to tell you the whole truth. She's going to tell you something that can be interpreted different ways. And sort of trick you a bit. Because, hey man... You know the story at this point. Um, but she is going to introduce you to the world. And she's going to tell you a bit about what has happened. She will tell you about the old war. And she will tell you about the Orokin Empire and how that collapsed during the old war. She will tell you a bit about the Corpus and the Grunir. So we actually get, you know, some, some clarity about, like, because we know... Just from from patching things together. We understand that after the Orokin Empire fell, the Corpus already the Corpus existed as a faction uh, during the Orokin Empire. They were like traders and, and merchants and, and capitalists and, and whatnot. Uh, we know this because Parvos Granum, he was like gifted a warframe as a personal bodyguard by the Orokin. Uh, he f he founded the Corpus Empire. Uh, so 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 they coexist. The Corpus did not show up like after uh, the Orokin Empire fell and like filled the void. They they were already around. It's just that after the Orokin Empire fell, they sort of took over because in that power vacuum, that was sort of like that they, they could they could basically claim the system. And then it's been the Corpus sort of running the show for quite some time while in the background the Grenier were, were building up their strength. Uh, because the Grenier didn't perish. They were, they were slaves during the Orokin Empire. Uh, once the Orokin Empire fell, the, the Grenier... Uh, now you're free. Sort of, right? <laughs> sort of. Um, but, you know... It takes a while to build up an army of billions of billions of clones, and they've been sort of biding their time and just increasing their strength over time. And the reason why all of the all of the warframes are being woken up by the Lotus and why we're being pulled back into service is because the Gurnir are making their move. Right? That's that's the big thing. The Gurnir have started to like openly uh, claim parts of the system and started challenging the corpus for supremacy and suddenly the corpus and the grenier are like at war with each other and that's where the lotus comes in and she feels that like oh no 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 we can't can't have that again we gotta have balance in the system which basically means no one gets to have too much power and also because we know about the looming sentient threat in the new war that's eventually going to come. And and um, that's why we're all being brought back. So she needs to tell us about this. This needs to be told to us so that we have some understanding about why we're here, why we were woken up, and why we are doing the things we're doing. It's not enough to just have the occasional voice line when we do like an invasion mission or something and the lotus talking about how it, there needs to be balance in the system that's it that's that's kind of like the only motivation we're given for for why she woke us up and why it's so important that we are here uh, there needs to be more than that there needs to be a warning about the sentient threat to come there needs to be an explanation of like who are the corpus who are the grenier why are we fighting them? Why is it important that we are here? Why is it important that the, these people are kept in check? Who is the Lotus? Uh, how do we know her? How does she know us? Why are we following her instructions? And that's what that meeting would be about here. And once that meeting is done, you get chucked back out into the relay and now you can go about your business and now you will go about your business with a renewed sense of purpose right 
as you are making your way through the star chart and as you are doing these other missions. Now you have in the back of your head what your actual real mission is and what you are working toward. So now when you encounter uh, Tile Regor, for example, uh, in Uranus, now you... Uh, you have some context behind the, him questioning why you are following the Lotus's orders. And then when the Nata quest happens, now you remember this conversation that you had with her here. And now you're starting to feel like things aren't really adding up. Because previously when the Nata quest happens, it's like, oh, everything you've been told is a lie. But it's like, but I haven't been told anything. <laughs> so... So, what's the lie? And even previously, when you get to Jupiter and 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 uh, you meet... Uh, I mean, I know you meet Alad V for the first time there, even though it's like it's kind of wrong to meet him for the first time there. But but now you have some context behind that. And he him capturing a Warframe and studying it and trying to create his own thing. Because now we view that from the context of like, oh, it's, you know, the war against the Grenier and the internal power struggles of the Corpus as well. And we sort of like understand who he is and his motivations. Uh, it makes more sense. We have more of a connection to it. And, and even the second dream, too. Uh, when you have the end of the second dream, and now the Lotus shows up, and now you have a second conversation with the Lotus, where the Lotus <clears throat> is all like, yeah, yeah, I wasn't telling you the whole truth before. Uh, now it's time to, for you to learn more. That has a bigger impact if there is a previous conversation where she didn't really tell us the truth. Um, it would help so much with just the narrative of the story of Warframe uh, to have uh, a previous encounter with the Lotus. And I think it should be pretty early on. I think it should be after War's Prize. Uh, and I think it should be her telling you to Operator, go to a relay and meet her. Wonders, what are you now, about? Um, that's my idea. I'm throwing that out there. It's a thing that can like sure you, you do some more voice work and you have to do a, a cutscene or whatever but it doesn't have to be more than that and it's something that could help a lot with just new player retention getting you to feel more connected with the story and, and give give you some more guidance as a new player as to what you're supposed to be doing uh i think it could help a lot and uh it's just a suggestion other than that, like just from a mechanical standpoint, they've already done a bunch of stuff to make the game new player friendly, uh, more so than it was before. One of the things, the new quest. Uh, another thing, the the marker telling you what to do. A third thing, which is actually super important, is Nightwave. Hey. Uh, night. That's pretty much the main purpose, I think, for Nightwave in the game now, besides giving you some some nice stuff. Is it's kind of teaching you systems of the game and telling you what to do. When it tells you complete an ISO vault. And then it tells you, like, here's how you go and do that. It's something that at least... It's it's pointing you in different directions. And telling you, here's a thing that exists in the game. And then you sort of look up, like, oh, how do I do that? Syndicate missions. And then it's like, oh, go to the syndicate panel. You must be a member of a syndicate. And then you have a reason to look that up. What's that? What syndicates? How do I become a member of a syndicate? And you explore more systems of the game. So... Yeah. Every week, Nightwave uh, teaches new players something new about the game. Now, there's obviously more stuff uh, that could use uh, some more, uh, uh, some better instructions. Modding. Modding is one of the biggest things where the game does not teach you enough about how you're supposed to do that. Um, but one step at a time. We don't have to do everything at once. Now we're just talking about the narrative and the story of Warframe. Here's a very, very simple little thing uh, to give people a better connection with the story of the world and what they're supposed to be doing. So that is that is my pitch for another uh, revisit of the earliest parts of the game. Uh, as always, eager to hear your comments, eager to hear uh, what you all think of like what does the game need? What's what's missing? How can we improve the story of the game? Uh, stuff like that. Because I always think you should be constructive. Uh, I, I, th I think you should never just 
be like, oh, this this is bad. This should be changed. You should always follow that up with how should it be changed? How could it be made better? Because then you're actually giving the developers, you know, something to work with, which is important. Anyway, that's the video. And I will see you guys again tomorrow for something completely different.